Hi, fifth graders. Here we are, lesson three of unit two. And we're going to be looking at decimal numbers, um, but looking at them with models and helping us to visualize what the decimal numbers stand for. So here the bar below represents one whole or one. So this entire bar is one. Shade six tenths and then shade two hundredths. Okay, so if I'm going to look at this, six tenths is going to be a whole one of these sections, right? Because if this is a whole, then I need to shade six out of 10. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then it says, and then shade two hundredths. So the smaller sections will be hundredths. Why does the drawing show six tenths plus two hundredths equals 60 hundredths plus 2 hundredths equals 62 hundredths. What this is asking us is, can you represent the 6 tenths as 60 hundredths? And yes, we can, right? That totally works. So the 6 tenths can be represented as 60 hundredths, and then just adding the 2 hundredths gets us to 62 hundredths. The number line below is labeled by tenths from 0 to 1. Begin at zero and circle a distance to show 28 hundredths or two tenths plus eight hundredths, which is the same thing as 20 hundredths plus eight hundredths. So we're gonna be circling 28 hundredths, which would be about right there. Maybe I went a little bit too far, but that's about right. Circle a new distance to show 74 hundredths. So there's my 70, or my 7 tenths, but my 70 hundredths. Four is gonna be right about there. Okay, so I'm showing, I'm, I'm just showing the distance with circles that time. Then here we're shading the grids to show each amount. So here we have four tenths. So I've got four columns there, right? And then that's the same thing as 40 hundredths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to 40. So you can finish the rest. Ooh, this one's kind of fun though. Look at this, you guys. One thousandth. If this is one hundredth, we kind of have to zoom in on that. I love doing these things, do you? Where we have kind of like a... <laughs> I had grand ideas for this. It's not quite turning out as planned. Okay, but there it is. So basically this, this square is this one zoomed in. So then I have to divide it into tenths and shade just one of those. Because remember how there are 10 thousandths inside of one hundredth. This is a very sloppy way of showing it. You hopefully will count those out very nicely. Use a sketch of money, a bar representing one, or one of the more grids to prove that each of the statements below is true. So you can decide how you're going to draw that to show that you can choose either A or B to show that they are equal, that that statement is true. Equivalent decimals represent the same value. Why does writing zeros to the right of a decimal number not change the value? It's just like writing zeros in front of a number to the left of the decimal point. So it doesn't change the value, it just makes the pieces tinier. Four tenths would be one of these, right? Four tenths, so four, or four of those. But if I add a zero here, now it's just 40 hundredths. So it's equivalent, four tenths. Four tenths is equivalent to 40 hundredths which is equivalent to 400 thousandths. So your pieces are just getting smaller, but your value is staying the same. Okay, so now we're gonna do some practicing of comparisons. We can use secret code cards to compare decimal numbers, and you can use them. You can stack them up on top of each other. It's a really nice way of comparing numbers. Or we can just line them up and make sure that we have them all lined up in the correct place value. They're also showing you how you can use money, which you're welcome to do as well. I'm gonna show you the way that I do it that keeps it pretty simple. 
And in my opinion, it's a, it's a pretty good way to do it. So let's check this out. Let's try, let's try 21 since it's right here. So we've got four tenths. Now to write this number underneath four tenths, I'm going to need to make sure I put my decimal straight underneath. That's super important. Then I can fill in the rest of the numbers, making sure that I line them up properly. Okay, now as we compare the numbers, it's the same as if we had numbers that are smaller, right? We just start on the left. Well, not smaller, I meant um, that it's just stay to the left of the decimal point. So we always stay to the left and we look at our first place value, which is the ones place. They're both zeros, so they're the same. So we have to move on to the next place, which is the tenths place. Again, they're both the same. So we have to move on to the next one, which technically they're both the same because there's nothing here. This is technically that, right? Even filling those zeros in might help you kind of keep your place value the same. So those are both zeros, so they're the same. Then we finally get to the last one. This is a zero, this is a four. So it's gonna be this place value, the thousandths place, that determines that this number is greater. So that number is greater. Now, some fourth and fifth graders might be tempted to just say this is greater because there's more numbers there, but don't, don't be fooled. This could have usually been a five, and if it was a five, then that wouldn't have helped us at all. So I have to think about that. Okay, that's the end of lesson three. Um, you can practice comparing a few of these and let me know if you, have, if you need any help. Thanks a lot, fifth grade.